As you think about what you come across, Pedro, when you speak to folks, what what don't we understand about the homeless? What would you say is the thing that we don't know at the heart of your work? What is there a misunderstanding about or a shortcoming in our education? Well, look at me. Look at my mother. We were struggling, we were poor. She was homeless. The folks that I know that are living in poverty, that are experiencing homelessness as they're working, because we serve working families that are experiencing homelessness, they are hard working. They're not lazy, like the myth says. They are determined to change their lives. They're not sitting waiting for a handout. They're doing everything they can to change their lives and are coming up against what we're, what we're struggling with as a nation now, the barriers that exist. And so it's understanding that these folks want the same thing that everyone in this virtual room wants, something that is best for their children, to achieve the cliche that it still has power, which is the American dream of being able to feed your family in a secure home that is yours and being able to give back to the community. These individuals are hardworking individuals. We see them every single day. We, we in Charlotte Family Housing use a phrase, the invisible homeless, because these folks are, are couch surfing, they're living in cars, they're living in motels, and they're serving us. They're driving our buses. They're, they're serving us coffee at, at a variety of different places, including Starbucks and elsewhere. They're bank tellers. They're, they're home care workers. These are hardworking individuals. And the circumstances of, of our national economy and our local economy, the lack of affordable housing, there are over 20,000 units that are needed. And the, and the average cost of, of housing right now, rent is, is around $1,400. A family earning the minimum wage would have to work 109 hours a week in order to afford the current uh, average uh, rent that exists here. Wow. And, and frankly, you know, our minimum wage nationally, and, and of course here in North Carolina, is $7.25. It hasn't been raised since 2009. So I would ask all of us that, that to understand that any one of us can end up being homeless. Think about 2008 and nine here in Charlotte. My understanding was that the banking industry and a lot happened, the downturn in the economy, there were lots of middle class, upper middle class folks that suddenly were living check to check. That's called situational poverty when they lost their job because of their social contacts, because of their social capital, because of the skills they had, their ability to move back into well-paying jobs was a lot easier. But if you've lived in generational poverty, if you've not had the social capital, your journey uh, with social mobility, your upward journey towards, towards the middle class is much more difficult. Frankly, right now, my biggest fear, you asked me what I'm most proud of, my biggest fear is that there is going to be a tsunami of homelessness and evictions that are going to occur starting August. And if this pandemic has a second major wave and, and the economy does a downturn, we're going to see lots of people nationally and here in Charlotte experiencing homelessness. And I wanna make sure that this agency is ready to serve those families. And my fear is that we will not be ready, not just Charlotte Family Housing, but we as a city, as a community. Yeah. Yeah, who could have known uh, just a very short time ago that COVID was going to deal ev an even more difficult blow to the folks that you are working so hard to lift. And I was going to ask you about the, the additional stress that brings on your nonprofit and, and all our beloved nonprofits in Charlotte but obviously it's something that keeps you up at night. It does, but I'm also, but I'm also, I'm also given tremendous hope. I am a national consultant with AHA Process, which is the Bridges Out of Poverty. And, and I've traveled around the country talking about how do agencies engage in helping uh, people that are in poverty? How do we bring in middle class and the wealthy? How do we join together to do that? And, and what I have found here in Charlotte is that the depth of philanthropy, the depth of giving, the desire to change, 
here, not, especially now, especially after the leading on opportunity report was written and the desire. And, and I understand that that may have been motivated by, by community ego, for lack of a better term. Nobody likes to be last. I don't like to be last. If I was 50th, I'd be working hard to at least be 35th. Yeah. Oh, we may, we, we may be first. Now, you know, I wonder if, if that Getty report had said we were 35th, what would have happened? But it didn't. It said we were last. And so people woke up and said, we cannot do this. And so as I got here and I saw that the community was doing community reads of the, you know, the color of law and having these conversations, I was inspired and I am, I am given tremendous hope that this is a community that wants, in fact, to be a welcoming and an inclusive global city. And I want to be a part of that. I want to be a part of making that come true for the families we serve, for their children, and for everyone else. Because as we lift them, we lift the entire community. You know, that's, that's so interesting, Pedro. I hadn't really thought about just how motivating uh, that report was because 50th out of 50 took our breath away. It, it absolutely took our breath away, but the good news is we, we stood up and we, we went to work. Um, tell us what we can do. If, if you were to ask us a specific ask for support, how might one go about doing that? Well, I think, I think, you know, actually educating yourself on what it is, what is homelessness, you know, how to, what are the barriers that exist, you know, um, learn about why the minimum wage is what it is, what are the, what are the, what are the changes that need to be made as a community in order to, in order to provide a, an exit ramp for these individuals. Let's take food stamps, for instance, um, you know, when you think about acquiring food stamps and how difficult it might be and what it actually purchases and can purchase. How do we engage in helping to change the, the, the laws that exist that might be a barrier to someone being able to find a pathway out of poverty without any shame, without any, any uh, difficulty? Um, and, and so that kind of education on understanding what our community is, reading the color of law, you know, reading, reading about what has gotten us to this place and then what do we need to do to change that? And I think as, as a community, I think coming together, you know, one of the things we pride ourselves on as an agency is that we're very collaborative. We recognize that we can't do everything for families. So we partner with Beds for Kids. We partner with Furnish for Good. We partner with Goodwill. We partner with so many other agencies um, because we recognize that if, if we define poverty as a lack of access to resources, then part of our job is to connect folks to those resources, to share whatever our social capital might be with these families. So everyone in this virtual room has social capital. Social capital has helped you to succeed. I have a debt to pay. I'm sharing my social capital. I ask you to share your social capital. I ask you to help the, the, the stereotype, the, the fact that, that poor people are not lazy, that poor people do want to change their lives, that people that are experiencing homelessness are not necessarily, particularly with families that are working, you know, we, we have a, there's a continuum of homelessness and we serve a particular sector. There are the chronically homeless that are homeless generationally and they're homeless because of a series of, of issues. The poverty and, and homelessness are intersectional. There are lots of causes. And so as we educate ourselves on that, then we can find an avenue and a venue in which we can then take our talents and share those talents share our resources with agencies like ours, like, uh, like the housing services, like, like uh, Roof Above, the Men's Shelter, uh, the Salvation Army, any number of other agencies that are engaged in this work. Well, you know, I'll tell you, you are an essential service uh, in this world as are our, our nonprofits and I have to share with you a dear friend of mine on the line sent me a private note and she said, you know, what a beautiful man. And it's perhaps um, not the thing that, 
you often say about a man, but I would echo with her, a, a beautiful man in heart and spirit uh, and concern. And you, you are such a blessing, uh, not only to Charlotte Family Housing and Charlotte, but certainly to us this morning. And thank you so much for spending time with us and helping us understand and educate us. I feel very, uh, very moved as I know I, I would be, as I knew I would be. We're at that time, I could sit here all morning with Pedro, but let me just remind you that we'll be here next week and that our guest is Shelley Moore, who is the executive director of the Humane Society of Charlotte. I hope that you'll be with us. And again, Pedro, gosh, thank you. Thank you. Bye, I'm everyone. honored to be with you all.